Christian Pulisic is officially an AC Milan player. He's already training with the squad. Yunus Musa has apparently agreed to personal terms and could be heading there soon. And Foding Balogun is linked to Milan as well. And with all those Americans heading or being rumored to head to Milan, we obviously have to talk about it. Hi, I'm Johan Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV. And today we have a special guest from Sempre Milan, the biggest AC Milan English news website in the world, Anthony, the owner. He'll be talking about where Pulisic fits in the depth chart for AC Milan, if he's expected to play a lot or not, what are the expectations from Milan fans. He's also going to talk about their midfield depth and if Yunus Musa would fit in or not. Lastly, we'll address also Balogun. And hopefully, if all these Americans head to Milan, we don't end up with a crazy breakup like we had with Leeds. Hopefully. Drop a like before we start and let me know down below in the comment section, what do you rate this Pulisic transfer to Milan from 1 to 10? 1 being awful, 5 being average, 10 being perfect. All right. All right, everyone. Today we have Anthony Torgrud here, the owner of Sempre Milan, uh, the biggest AC Milan news website in English. They also have a YouTube channel, Twitter account, everything. And we're here to get his expert opinion on Milan itself and because of all the Americans that are going, well, for now, just Pulisic, but it looks like Yunus Musa might be heading there soon. We're going to talk about that and possibly Balogun. Anthony, welcome to the channel. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. I'm uh, obviously American myself. I'm sure you could tell by the accent. So, you know, this one's close to home. I'm, I'm pretty excited about everything that's going on. But you are a diehard Milan fan right there. The biggest website in English. Um, I can see the background there, yeah. too. Uh, but, Anthony, why don't we start with this? Americans or U.S. men's national team fans, we just went through a very tough breakup with Leeds, a very tough one. It was nasty. We had Jesse Marsh there, Weston McKinney, Brendan Aronson, Tyler. As of now, only Tyler Adams is there, and we don't even know if he'll stay there. Mm -hmm. But we have a na we had a nasty fallout with the fans. You guys got Pulisic, which is our star boy right now, our star player, Christian Pulisic. And you're linked to Musa, linked to Balogun. Musa looks like it might actually happen. By the time people are watching this, maybe the deal is even out. So let's start with Pulisic. Let's talk about Pulisic. He's there. It's confirmed. He's already training with Milan. First thing I want to ask you is what position, because Milan plays a lot in a 4-2-3-1. Of course, that can change. But what position do you think he'll play for Milan? Yeah, I think uh, one of the great things about Pulisic is he's so versatile. You know, he could play anywhere in the attacking trident. Um, what we're hearing right now is starting uh, as an attacking midfielder or the right wing. Uh, we've been linked with a few other right wingers, so I think the idea originally was to shift him to an attacking mid. Um, however, the way things are moving now, it doesn't look like we're going to pursue right wing options. Um, and it looks like we're going to switch to a flat 4-3-3. So I wouldn't be shocked if he's now the starting right wing. Obviously, plays on the left for the U.S. and did um, for, for Chelsea at times as well. But Rafael Leao, just, he has that spot locked down. He's not going to get benched. Maybe uh, a cup game that Ruff has been uh, benched at or, or rested, you know, then then Pulisic could start on the left. But overall, I fully believe he's going to be a starter on the right wing. But if you rest Rafael Leon in a cup game, you're probably going to rest Pulisic too, especially with the injury history, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, if, if he's playing the league as much as I hope he does, then then yeah, he's going to probably be rested. We, we tend to rest most of our players during cup games but not all of them you know you want to have a few key strong players in there that could still get the job done in a pinch um so i wouldn't be surprised if he kind of plays that re relief role but the guys we have right now at, at right wing um alexis alamakers and junior macias they're just they're not good enough uh they really haven't been that quality macias he's 31 years old um if you're not familiar he's got one of the most incredible stories going into football he was uh an immigrant from brazil to to italy and was playing weekend league while delivering refrigerators uh, as his day job. And he got picked up by a Serie D side and then worked his way up and then eventually scored in the Champions League for us last season. So he's got a fantastic story. But at the end of the day, he's he's simply not Milan quality. Um, and, and we are looking to move on from him there. And uh, Sal Makers, he's young. He still has plenty of time to grow. He's even younger than Christian. He's 22 or 23, I believe he just turned. Um, but again, he's, he's showing sparks of brilliance but not enough to really lock down that spot and make it his own so i think a guy like Pulisic, who has won the champions league and has top experience with chelsea the national team even dortmund um, i think he's going to come in and just 
take ownership of that really quick. So, so you're saying in the depth chart, regardless of the position, you're saying probably as a 10 or maybe as a right winger, he comes in to be a starter. It's his position to lose. Yeah. Look, Italian teams, they don't have a lot of money. Um, you, you look at the fee, you know, about 25, depending on how, who your source you're trusting is. Uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, especially the money that Chelsea paid to get him from Dortmund. But for an Italian team, that is. They don't spend that on a player to put him on the bench or to develop him. You know, they, they spend that because they see something and they think he's going to make an instant impact. So um, in my mind, there's no way he comes on to be a bench player unless he just does horrible, which I don't foresee. Yeah. And and again, we've seen a lot of players come from the Premier League and play in the city. out. I think when I was at your podcast, we talked about Tammy Abraham, for example. Mm -hmm. Chelsea didn't want him, goes to yeah. Serie A, very effective player. And I expect something like that from Pulisic as long as he stays healthy. I think that's that's probably the only concern that I have, and probably even Milan fans. Like, will he keep getting those little injuries every three, four games, mm -hmm. or will he actually get it going? Let me ask you a question that might be a bit more personal. Sure. You are American, right? Yeah. Uh, does this transfer have any special meaning to you because it's Christian Pulisic or, or it's just like another good player that your team, your club signed? Uh, no, it, it does. So I've obviously I'm American. I've been watching the men's team, the national team for, you know, as long as I could remember. Um, and we've never had someone that was really the quality that I'd say, like, I want this guy at Milan. And when Pulisic was doing his thing at Dortmund, I was like, oh, this kid's great. You know, we'll see what he becomes. And then at Chelsea, um, some of my best friends back home are, are Chelsea fans. So I've gotten every appeals to Chelsea jersey just to kind of pseudo support them while also supporting our guy. Um, and I've been calling for this transfer ever since. I've always wanted him. I just think he's so fun, so incredible. Uh, for the longest time, you know, the well, not, I guess not the longest time. It was only last summer. But the uh, the picture of him silencing the crowd, you know, his shirt off after mm -hmm. winning. Was it the Gold Cup or was that Nations League? It was Nations League. That was 2021, actually. Okay. Oh, God, time flies. Yeah. But, you know, that was my background everywhere for the longest time. I've, I've always been a fan. Um, you could, you know, go on my Twitter advanced search history and just type in Pulisic and you'll see I've been talking about him since probably 2017 or so. Um, big, big fan, really excited. And I've, I've done the rounds defending him because obviously, you know, if you don't follow him, if you don't follow the Premier League, you're just strictly following Milan, you hear a link to a player, you look up his most recent stats. And obviously last season was not mm -hmm. a good season for Chelsea, but specifically Christian. So um, I'm just seeing a lot of, he scored one goal. Why do we want this guy? And I was like, you don't get it. You know, he's had injuries. He's had six managers in his three Played seasons as at right Chelsea. Wing back. They put him as a right wing back at times. Exactly. He's just been kind of shoehorned in whenever they feel like it, not even where they think he's going to fit. So uh, I think he's been wildly misused at Chelsea. And I, I just couldn't be happier that he's getting this new lease on life. You see it in the interviews. You see it in the, the training ground uh, videos. He's smiling. He looks happy. We haven't seen him happy in a while. So I think we're going to see something really special, especially given that he already knows some of the players with Giroud, who he linked up so well with, with uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who he was with last season, with Tamori, who he played with briefly. You know, he knows some of these guys, and there's more links coming in as well. Like, we'll get to Musa, you know, from the national team. So he's got a great core of guys around him that he already knows that can help him build that connection with everyone else. And I, I'm just really excited for it, man. I also think that Pulisic is one of those players that we think he's like a superstar because he's the face of U.S. soccer right now, mm -hmm. the U.S. men's national team, at least. I wouldn't say U.S. soccer, but the U.S. men's national team. And he's not really like that's not his personality. No. Right. He's a player that needs that, that's like he needs to be, I would say, like loved or like pushed to like motivated when you're bringing him down. He's a very streaky player. So when you bring him down, sometimes it just goes all the way down, like very yeah. poorly, like with Chelsea. That's why with the U.S. men's national team, we see him perform far better because he's very much loved, supported by the fans, uh, fan favorite for most of the fans, or, or at least one of the favorites, right? Top three for pretty much every fan. Mm -hmm. With Milan, maybe he'll get that. While Chelsea, you just had, you know, it, it has a little bit to do with like English football fans, yeah. English soccer fans, where, you know, the American, it's always the American, the American. We saw that with Leeds a little bit. I do also think the Americans have blame, right? They, they're not perfect. Of course, yeah. But it's always the American, right? When they don't perform, it's like the American, the American this, the American that. And it gets annoying after a while and, and Pulisic had to leave. And I hope he doesn't get that with Milan. I mean, Dest failed at Milan, but I never really felt uh, with Milan fans an anti-American bias. I think Dest failed in Milan for different mm -hmm. reasons and for a fault of his own rather yeah. than the club. But going there, on, there definitely on. is a bit of that anti-American bias with the Milan there fans. Is. It's such a, a worldwide club that, you know, let, let's 
not pretend that there is an American hate out in the world. There's a lot of it. And a lot of those nations support mm -hmm. Milan. So uh, when all the links came in, you know, there was a lot of hate solely because of he's American, not he's young, 24, had a bad season. We could grow him into something. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's this American guy. He's no good. We saw that with Des at the beginning. And then his performances himself kind of backed it up a little bit. Let's mm -hmm. be real. He didn't have a great season. I, I hope the best. Um, and prior to that, we had Onyewu, who never made a single appearance for us. Played one game in the Champions League, but never a league appearance. And his legacy at Milan is uh, getting in a fist fight with Zlatan during training. So Americans don't have the best track record here. And I, I think some people are just holding on to that. Italians, they love to cling on to the past. You know, we haven't seen a new stadium in Italy in, in 15 years. Uh, Juventus being the only exception to that. So it's there's a lot of uh, a struggle for change um, in Italian football that really needs to go away so that they can push forward. But obviously that's a different argument. Um, but uh, look, the, the way Christian will win the fans over is just by playing the ball we know he could play. And if he succeeds, he'll be beloved. If he fails, they're going to turn on him. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's just fans, right? That's everywhere. So it, it's hit or miss, but I think they'll give him a fair chance as soon as he starts. It's once it goes bad that things will change. You know, they, they'll throw the hate at him until he signs. Once he signs, he's everyone's favorite player until the day he isn't. Yeah, I think the the anti-American bias in soccer is just simply because Americans are known for sucking at soccer. And mm -hmm. and we've seen that change the past, like, well, the past few decades, but mostly in the past five years, we've seen better American players, right? Like Pulisic, for example, yeah. players that can actually play in these leagues. But there's always going to be a bit of like, oh, Americans, they can't play soccer, especially with England. I, I'm pretty sure it won't be as bad as England, at least the way they deal yeah. with Americans. is Like Jesse Marsh arrived at Leeds already being called Ted Lasso. Like he didn't even start. He was already Ted Lasso right away. Uh, but let's let's move on from Christian yeah. Pulisic. Des. Let's talk about Yunus Musa. The news came out today from Fabrizio Romano himself as well and other journalists from Italy that Musa has agreed already to personal terms with AC Milan. Uh, they just need Valencia and Milan to reach an agreement. And I know you know a little bit here and there about Musa more because of the U.S. men's national team, not yeah. so much in regards to his club play. And I kind of told you a little bit about of how I thought for Valencia he didn't perform well. He was much of a passenger playing the central midfield position. And then I even talked to you and mentioned, but maybe – in Milan, playing with better players will get the best out of him. Maybe Valencia was a bit of a problem. We don't know, but he's still a very young player. But my question to you is more in regards to Milan. Let's say Yunus Musa does arrive. Tell us a little bit of what does your central midfield position look like? What are the options? And do you really need a central midfielder right now? Uh, yes, we absolutely 100% do. Um, going to last season, well, actually, you know, let me put a little more history on it. The season prior, we won the Scudetto. We had a midfield three of Sandro Tonali, Ismail Benacer and Frank Kessie. End of that season, Kessie goes to Barcelona. We don't replace him. We don't sign anyone else. Um, we get uh, Tomaso Pobega back from, from Torino. He was on loan there. And we thought, okay, that'll be good enough. Similar profile. Well, spoiler alert, he wasn't. He was pretty poor. Um, and then going to this summer, Sandro Tonali is now a Newcastle player. So, oh, and then on top of that, the last game of the season, or oh, I'm sorry, it was the during the first leg of the Champions League semifinal, in the first 15 minutes, Benacer goes down. There's some ligaments and he's out till February. So going into next season, we don't have a single one of our starting three midfielders. We brought in Loftus Cheek to, to fill a void. Um, we brought in, well, to tomorrow is his medical Tijani Reinders from uh, the Dutch league. And I apologize if I butchered that name. I'll get around to learning it eventually. Um, mm -hmm. But we have them. And then we have Krunich, who was originally our fifth choice center mid. And then of course, Paul Bega, who we're, we're trying to offload right now. And, where does that leave us? It leaves us with a big hole in the middle of the field. So whoever comes in is, is going to play. You know, we, we have a lot of rotation going on there until we find out who that, that midfield three is going to be. Um, personally, I think we need defensive midfielders. Obviously, Musa wears the six for the national team, but he's not really the world's most defensive-minded midfielder. You know, he's still no, more ball-to-ball. And, ball. and he, doesn't, he doesn't play the six with Tyler there. He played the six in Nations League now recently, mm -hmm. and he did a good job, but, yeah. but he's not. that's not his main quality of defending, even though he's fine. He's fine. Yeah. But he's not like a, a ball-winning midfielder or a destroyer, right? Like Tyler Adams, for example. Yeah, and that's kind of my worry as well because we don't have that defensive-minded defensive minded player. In Syria, the way they play, it's very defense-oriented. You know, you, you don't want to push forward and leave your back line exposed because you will get beaten on the counter. And that's where our, our system started to fail um, towards March of last year. We were leaving our back line exposed too much, and we were getting beaten on the break, and we lost a lot of games because of it. So I am very worried about that. 
But like you said, he played it during the Nations League, and I thought he looked great. I watched every game of the Nations League this summer, and I, I was really happy with it. Now, I haven't watched him with Valencia at all, so I, I don't know. And and you spoke to that, and I agree with better players, you do step up. Um, looking at the Leeds experiment, it wasn't a great team overall. So when you shoehorn a bunch of guys in there who play on the same national team, but you give them you know, nothing to support them and help them grow, then you're destined to fail. Whereas at Milan, this is a team who just won a league title, was just in the Champions League semifinal. They're good players, flawed, but good players. So you put in a young guy, Moose is 20, I believe. He might be turning 21 soon. Um, he has a lot of, to learn, a lot to grow. But ultimately, I, I do think he could fit in. And while the midfield around him is also going to be new, they still are very experienced players that can teach each other plenty of stuff, you know. So I think it'll work out eventually, but I think he's going to play either in a flat 4-3-3 as a box-to-box, um, or they might try to shoehorn him in the double pivot, and that does worry me a little bit. Yeah, I, I guess my biggest concern with Musa is not taking up a challenge. I think if you want our players, if we want our players to be the best version of themselves, they have to go challenge themselves, mm -hmm. go to a team. My main concern was him arriving at a club and and just like not getting an opportunity it's just like he's there training never gets a chance because they have their three-man midfield set no one's gonna touch that somewhat like dest i know dest got opportunities through injuries but let's be honest he was never gonna bench calabria right no. it just wasn't and, and he happen. wasn't meant to come either he was a i believe a deadline of the final week of the of last loan. window signing yeah he yeah. was alone because florenzi went down for a season-long injury first game this season and calabria got hurt shortly thereafter so dest was forced to play and he wasn't really expected to. I mean, we we gave Barcelona like a, a 25 million euro option to buy, which to me said, we're never taking that up. We just need to get this deal across the line so we have a player. He was a yeah. body on the squad list. That's all Dest was, unfortunately. And, and again, when Calabria got injured, we knew he was going to be back, I think, in like six weeks. And we yeah. knew he was going to be the starter once exactly. he was back. He was the captain, too. So it's a bit different. Uh, mm -hmm. In regards to Musa, that was my concern. But you kind of just mentioned there's it's not really injuries the main issue. There is one injury that you mentioned, right. but it's mainly that just guys just left. You don't really yeah. have that many options. So Musa would, would be given the opportunity. And if he's good enough, he'll grab it. If he's not then, I mean, at least he failed trying at a higher level, right? And I'm okay yeah. with that. So now that you mentioned that, I am more open to Yunus Musa going there. I was just very concerned of him arriving at Milan and being like a death situation where it's just yeah. like, eh, if you don't perform in these two games, you're done. And that's sort of what happened. Last but not least, why don't we talk about Balogun now? And we left him for last because he's that one might not happen. It's it's mm -hmm. probably more like there's interest for sure based on the reports, but it doesn't look like it'll happen. But let's assume it does happen. The fee is too high. There's a lot there's a lot of barriers for it to happen. Maybe maybe a loan with an option to buy and Milan can get that. Mm -hmm. But right now, what center forward options do you have? And based on the little you know about Balogun, the very little you know, uh I'm assuming you don't know much because you didn't watch Liga for sure. But yeah. based on the U.S., you know a little bit about him here and there. Uh, is he a player that would arrive in more of a Pulisic situation or Musa situation? He arrived to be the starter, or he arrived to hey, you're gonna have to grind it out here, man. He would 100% be a starter. Um, you know, Milan likes to go for Liga and players pretty often, so I, I watch a lot of highlights of Liga. I don't watch the actual games. In fact, the only network that shows it here is is BN, and I, I just simply mm -hmm. don't subscribe, so I don't have access to it. Um, that said, obviously tons of hype around the national team, and I thought he looked pretty good in both his games. Mexico one was a little rough, um, but he did get that that goal against um, Canada. Yeah, Canada, thank you. Um, but I, I do like his numbers, and I don't think he has a place at Arsenal. I, I think a move is likely. Now, to me on, we, you know, probably unlikely. There's a lot of moving parts that would be needed to happen to get there. Um, but how he fits in, look, our striker situation right now is – Giroud, who's 36, still putting up numbers. I think he had 13 goals last season. That's great for a 36-year-old striker. Um, but he's playing way too many games. His body's not going to hold up in 45 games a season or however many we end up playing. The second string is Divock Origi, who scored two goals last season. Um, signed on a free, signed on high money for, for Milan. It's four and a half million. Um, and he, he scored two or three goals, but then was injured immediately and was in and out. And the last 20 appearances or so of the season, he just didn't do anything. He looked really out of shape, out of sorts. And I foresee him leaving this window. We don't have a third string striker. That was previously a 42 year old Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who also only played four games last season. So our striker position is more open than the midfield position. Whoever we sign at striker is going to start over Giroud. I just don't foresee Giroud 
being that guy for another season. Um, you know, he'll have spells, have spurts. He'll make a run here and there. But overall, whoever Milan sign as a striker, that's going to be the guy. That's who they're going to make the biggest investment in because it's going to have to be a striker for the future. Um, we're seeing Taremi from Porto, the Iranian. He's a link, but he's also 31 years old. But he's good. He's yeah. very good. Uh, I think he's scored over 80 goals in the last three seasons combined. So he's great numbers. Will it translate to a top league? We'll have to find out. Um, and same thing with Balogun. You know, this is really the first season he's blown up. You mentioned Middlesbrough and on my podcast. Um, and he was okay, you know, and then, yeah. then he's got this great season in, in France, which, you know, regardless of what people say is also maybe not a top five league anymore either. So we'll see how that translates to a top team. Um, but I do think he would have the right support at Milan with obviously Pulisic, with Liao being as incredible as he is. Um, even Taylor Hernandez, our left back, loves to get forward as much as possible, and he can get the ball there. It sounds like uh, Balogun is more creative than the strikers we have, being Giroud a target man. You're, you're lobbing in crosses and hoping he gets his head to it. Um, I don't think that's what the strategy with Balogun. I think he is creative and fast and can get forward, and that is something that Milan fans have been lacking. We need that diversity in our strikers. So I think he can also play on the wing if you need. Mm. So he he has played wide a few, not very often, but a few times. I saw it for Middlesbrough. Even with runs, sometimes they'll place him wide. He is a center forward, but let's say you're having issues there with the wingers. Mm -hmm. Balogun can go there, play Giroud. That might be something that interests uh, Milan. While Taremi, he's just a center forward. Right. Well, I guess I saw it with Iran in the World Cup. Sometimes they would play Taremi almost as a 10 because he's mm -hmm. very technical, right? He's a very good player. Uh, but but like you said, Taremi's like 31, yeah. right? So you sign him, you're going to get a guy that will probably perform right away. But if you paid the same amount of money for Balogun, you could have a striker for 10 years. Right. And right? that's what we got away now is do we take the risk? Because it is still a risk on a young guy and hope that he's going to perform for a decade. Or would you take the more surefire option in Taremi and have him for two, maybe three seasons? Because mm -hmm. his drop off is going to begin sooner rather than later. So it's one of those things that got to weigh up in the option. Maybe and the now. other. The other final issue with it is um, you only get two non-European players per per season in Italy. We've used one on Loftus Cheek because England is no longer part of the European Union, Ooh, so he yeah. doesn't count. Or he, I'm sorry, he does count as a non non EU slot. So it'd be Balogun or Taremi, one of them. The right winger we were pursuing, uh, Chukwueze, is also non EU, and that's why I think we're abandoning that so we could go for a striker. But we'll see. Whoever it is, I mean, that it's the last slot. So there's a lot of thought that has to go into it. And the other thing is preseason starts in, in four days. So we kind of start need to start finishing up this team. The longer we wait, the more ready-made we need the player to be. So it, it's either take the punt now or take the safe option later. Those are our options. So it's looking unlikely that Balogun will go there. If he does, it would be awesome. And if they sign Taremi, that kind of helps Pulisic because Taremi cannot play as a winger. And yeah. that will block the other winger y'all were signing, which means Pulisic will be busy as long as he stays healthy. But Anthony, that was all for this episode. I hope now U.S. men's national team fans know more about Milan. We all know Milan, and I even made that joke that Milan is bigger than Chelsea. Whether Chelsea fans like to hear this or not, when you look into the history of the game, Milan is way bigger than Chelsea. It's not even close, but Chelsea's been better the past 10 years, I would yeah. say, something like that, uh, 10 to 15 years. Regardless. Americans have arrived, and hopefully we don't go through a breakup like we did with Leeds. I hope it's a successful one, and I want to buy a Pulisic jersey, which I know you already did buy a Pulisic yeah. jersey. Yeah, it should be arriving later today or tomorrow. So, And like I said, I got plenty of uh, Chelsea versions of it already, so it'll be on the wall. You can't see it, but I got a bunch more on this wall here, so you'll definitely have a place on the wall very soon. Where can everyone find you? Um, me personally, I'm on Twitter at Torgid45, but follow uh, SempreMilan.com on Twitter. That's our main website, that's uh, News Aggregate. You're going to get every bit of Milan news, almost an obnoxious amount on there. SempreMilan.com is the website. And then, of course, on YouTube, SempreMilan.com as well. So check us out. Uh, like, subscribe. Appreciate it. Yep. And I'll put this here on screen for everyone. This is the account. You guys can all check it out there on Twitter. And then, obviously, check out on YouTube, podcast, website, everything. SempreMilan right there on screen. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Drop a like before you go. Have a great day. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.